Hi, Ken Burton here with Woodcraft Magazine. Do a little turning with you here today. So I thought we'd make a, or I would make, and you would watch me make, a pepper mill with a built-in salt shaker. So this is kind of a cool project. The salt shaker part is the top here. Carefully unscrew this. And so this metal disc has got the holes for the salt to come out. And then the hole in the wooden blank or the wooden piece is the reservoir for the salt. And then down below, this comes off, we've got another reservoir for the pepper and underneath is pepper grinder. So it's a pretty cool little project. And it comes, it's a Wood River kit. So it looks like this. I'm not fond of the design they have on the box, so I'm gonna show you how to make my design. Um, but all the hardware is in here. Now, when you open this up, there aren't any directions in here. So you have to get the directions online or watch this video. I'll show you what to do. So, so I have my blank chucked up on the lathe. It's a nice little lathe from Rikon. And you'd be able to do this on um, most any MIDI lathe and most of the, the mini lathes. Uh, as long as you can spin something that's at least eight inches between centers. Now I got this blank, it's a 12 inch blank. I had hoped I could get two pepper mills out of it. Unfortunately, I'm only gonna be able to get one. First step is just gonna be to turn this round. I'm gonna use a spindle roughing gouge, which I just sharpened a minute or two ago. And I'm gonna turn the piece at approximately 1200 RPM. So just move the tool rest down so I can get a second end. So if you ever get a chance to take a turning class, you may hear your instructor talk about the ABCs of turning, which is when you set your chisel down, you want to anchor it on the tool rest, you want to rub the bevel, and then you do your cut. To that, I would add a D, which is dance. And if you notice, I'm kind of shifting my weight back and forth between my feet, so I'm not moving my arms a whole lot. And that's one of the ways you can get a pretty nice surface on here. Um, I've got a few ridges, but I'm not all that worried about it right now. Um, but I do have my piece turned round. Now to make this thing, I actually need to make to cut my blank into two pieces. So the top part wants to be two inches long and the bottom part is measure to get make sure I tell you right three and three quarters so at the headstock end I'm gonna take a parting tool and turn a tenon about a quarter of an inch long and then from that shoulder I'm gonna measure my two inches for 
the upper part of the mill and then part in a line, then do my three and three quarters and turn another tenon at the end. And then the, whatever's left over, I'm just gonna get, um, it's just gonna become waste. I'll use it for something else. So, parting tool. Again, about 1200 RPM. So I've got tendon on the one end, kind of come down two inches. Okay, so I've got my two inch mark there. There we go. Double check that. So I'm just a hair long. I'm going to shorten that up just a little bit. That's better. Then my three and three quarters. So this mahogany is relatively soft and broke free on me before I was quite ready for it, but that's okay. So I've got my blank now. So I've got tenon on either end and I can split it down the middle, not the middle, two inches, three and three quarters. So I need to pop the center out. I've got a knockout bar. It'll slide through the headstock and just pop it free. Now I need to swap out the spur center for a four draw scroll chuck. So I'm gonna thread this on the spindle. And I'm gonna grab my blank. I've lost here it is. So I'm gonna get that tenon in the chuck and tighten it up. And it's nice to have this shoulder on a piece because that lets me keep the piece square in there and I'm going to bring the tailstock in for a little bit of extra support so that should be good so now in that area that I cut in between the um, two pieces. I'm just going to take the parting tool and part through as far as I can.
All right, so this top portion gets two holes in it. The first hole is going to be one and sixteenth inches in diameter, which is the Forstner bit I've got here. And it goes all the way through. I just want to double check and make sure if I drill through this that I don't drill into metal. So I should be okay. I don't have anything to worry about too much in the chuck to hit. So I'm going to back off the tailstock spindle. And when it reaches the end of its travel, if I go just a little further, it pops free. I swap it for a drill chuck or a Jacob's chuck with my Forstner bit in it. Now I want to slow the lathe down, oh, somewhere between five and 600 RPM for this operation. I felt like it went all the way through, but I think I need to go just a little bit further. You do want to be careful when you drill in through end grain like this. Now this mahogany is pretty soft. It drills nicely. Um, harder woods can get really, really hot. So one, you want to be careful not to burn up your drill bit. And the other thing, you want to be careful not to touch it and burn yourself up. Yep, so you can see I've got a hole all the way through. So I'm going to switch over. This is a little thing. It's, it's called a jam chuck, which I made earlier. And it is just a chunk of wood. And I turned a little tenon on the end that matches that 1 and 16th inch diameter. The last time I used this, I needed to add a little tape to the outside just so I had a good fit. We'll see if that holds true today. I made this on a different lathe, so hopefully it still works with this particular chuck. And it seems to. We'll see if it spins true. Pretty close. So now I want to turn this around and jam it on here, which is hence the name Jam Chuck. And actually, I think that tape may be just a hair too much, but that seems to, let's just look and see if it spins true. So I must be living right this time. So now I want to get rid of that tenon, and then I'm going to drill a second hole, and this is an inch and a half in diameter. It just gets drilled a little bit of the way in, and it for, it's going to make a little recess for the um, salt dispenser portion. If you can I'll take this off again. 
And so that's going to form this portion of the hole. So I have a spindle gouge, move the tailstock so it's a little bit out of my way. I'm going to turn the speed up again about 12, 12 to 1300. Okay, so I turn the tenon away. And I'm gonna switch over to this inch and a half portion a bit. Bring it in. So this hole only needs to be about a quarter of an inch deep. I can take a look on the tailstock spindle and actually if I put a little bit of tape on it right up next to the casting now as I advance the bit since it's right up tight up against the blank when the gap between the tape and the casting reaches a quarter of an inch I know I'm far enough in Again, I'm going to turn the speed back down between five and six hundred. Now I could measure that. I have a pretty good eye for these things, and fortunately, it doesn't have to be super precise. So I've got the holes drilled. Next step is gonna to be to turn this to shape. So I'm gonna do a little rounding here, and then kind of a cove down to the bottom. So back to my spindle gouge and actually pop the bit out and I've got this nice large cone here I can run that in and it will grab and help support on the outside of that inner hole the only thing I need to worry about is when I turn in close I don't want to hit my steel center. Okay. Speed back up. So I've rounded that top shoulder. Now I'm gonna do a little cove cut, swooping in this way, looking at it like so. Reduce the whole diameter a little bit. And if you use a sharp chisel and rub the bevel and cut with the grain, you end up with a surface that needs very little sanding at the end, which is kind of your goal.
So in the last thing, oh, I've got a little bit of tear out right at the bottom of the cut. So I'm gonna go and do a real light pass and see if I can get past that. And then put a little bit of a chamfer right at the very end. So that looks pretty good, pretty similar to what's here, although this, this one's got a little bit of a recurve, but I'm pretty happy with that shape. So at this point, I should sand it, but who wants to watch that? So I'm gonna take this off. So there's the top of my mill. And I'm gonna get take the jam chuck out and repeat the process with the three and three quarter inch piece. So that seems to be spinning true. So this part gets a one and a sixteenth inch hole all the way through, and then let you look at it here for a sec. It gets a shallow quarter inch, one and a half inch hole in the top and a somewhat deeper one and a half inch hole underneath. So I've got the one and a sixteenth inch bit. Yeah, so this is gonna go just about all the way through. Once I reach the chuck on this, it's approximately the three and three quarters I need. So that'll be my stopping point. Again, speed down around between five and 600 RPM. So this Rikon lathe is nice. It's got a nice long throw or how far it travels, but it didn't go quite far enough. So I'm gonna retract it, then reset the tailstock. I'm gonna move it in a little bit and finish drilling this hole. Again, that bit may be hot, be careful. So I just advance it into the hole, start up again. So this is the top of the bottom section and I'm going to take my spindle gouge and just turn it flat and then drill that little shallow inch and a half hole. So speed back up.
so that's good and flat across there. Back to the one and a half inch fastener bit, get the tool rest out of the way. Another little piece of tape so I can gauge the depth. Speed back down. So I've got my through hole and then the shallow inch and a half hole. So switch back over to the jam chuck, grab this in here. Get rid of this for a moment so I don't bang my elbow on it. So you probably notice I picked up a little bit of a wobble. Not surprising given the length of the piece and the fact that I just have it on a jam chuck. So what I'm going to do is take, go back to my live center here and bring it in for a moment. And kind of loosen things up in the chuck. and use that to straighten things out and it should establish a center again. Retighten. So that's turning true again. Let's see if that maintained it. Pretty close. Back over to the inch and a half Forstner bit. Another piece of tape. So this hole is gonna wanna be approximately half an inch deep. That's all good. We turn the speed back down. OK, 
Okay. Life center back in. Bring it in to, for some added support. And now I can turn the rest of this to shape. So it's in this orientation, little bead at the bottom. And some other shapes there. I have a little bit of cleanup to do, a little bit of sanding to do, but the basic shape is there. So let's assume I've done all that, spin some finish onto this, and then I can get ready to put this together. Okay. So this white section slips in here, and there are three screw holes in the bottom. So it gets screwed in place. And this black nickel top. So this goes in here, like so. So then this white section and the, the pepper mill itself slides in from underneath. Then you line the screw holes up with the little notches cut in the rim here. Come on, there we go. And that all gets screwed to the underside. Assemble. This slips on here. That goes there. And then it's held together with the cap. And you've got a lovely salt, salt shaker pepper mill. Hope you enjoy making yours. Thanks for watching.